Here are four dinosaurs, which you may or may not recognize if you had to replace the United States official animal replica, the bald eagle, with an extinct dinosaur, which of these four should it be? USA. Now think about not just what it looks like, think about kind of the ethos that you feel coming, emitting from this dino, kind of their personality, their attitude. How does that align with that of the United States? Oh, then I chose poorly. I mean, everyone's choosing, not everyone, but a lot of people are picking Deinonychus. Our options are Deinonychus, Brontosaurus, Parasaurolophus, and Triceratops. Um, I mean, my favorite of these is, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna sway the vote. But I guess it makes sense. Most people are voting for Deinonychus right now. We have 19 votes for Deinonychus. Triceratops at 11, Parasaurolophus at 10. Uh, I guess that makes sense, though, because the bald eagle is most closely related to Deinonychus, so we're just picking, like, a similar, more scary, extinct dinosaur than the bald eagle. We have 48 out of 55% of people voting. That's 88. Oh, 49 out of 55. We're at 89% voting participation. We've got to hit 90. All right, there we go. You guys yeah. telling me in the chat, just put it in the poll. Make your vote count. Yeah, if you just like roll up to a polling station for an election and yell who you want to. Christina. <laughs> that doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't record your vote. This is who I vote. Yeah. Just put it in the Christina thing. Christina goes to vote for president. That's not, you got to write her in the ballot. Put her on the ballot. Got to write it in. All right. It's 12.05. Oh. We have 94% of you have voted. I'm going to end this poll. I'm going to share the results. Deinonychus takes it away. Deinonychus with 22, I'm sorry, 42% of the vote. Triceratops at 25. Parasaurolophus at 21%. And Brontosaurus, only 12%. I thought Brano would be higher ranked but you know it's fine that's why we have elections that's why this is as last time i checked a democracy all right um christina how you doing good morning good morning um i'm doing pretty well okay. i watched two youtube videos and cut my own hair last night i'm feeling bold it does look great it looks Thank great. You. you have less hair your hair is technically smaller at this point which is on brand for today because we're talking about the world's smallest. And by the way, I realize that a lot of people outside of the Twitterverse don't use the word S-M-O-L, like small, as like a jokey way to describe things as small. So I've been saying small and smallest and people think I'm just doing a weird accent or something, uh, but that's what that's from. Speaking <laughs> of things that are really small, we have a dino of the day. And guess what? Today's dino of the day is an extant dinosaur, which means it is alive today. And as we know, it's obviously a bird. Those are the only extant living dinosaurs. So our dino of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it's literally the smallest bird in the world, the bee hummingbird endemic to Cuba. I love the different colors on the iridescent wings and feathers. So this is your dino of the day. At the end, we're going to go around the room and do our paleo. Well, I guess it's not really paleo art today. It's current ornithological art. Uh, I'm excited to see your renderings of the world's smallest theropod, the world's smallest dinosaur, the world's smallest bird, the Aww. bee hummingbird. I think that was a good choice. I'm excited about that. So, uh, Christina. Hello. Guess what? What? It's time to play dino or not a dino. Yes. Uh, I'm going to need your help, though. We need, a, we need to pick a participant for today. We have a lot of worthy parties out there. I'm excited for you to pick someone who maybe hasn't played yet. Ooh. This is what I do when I forget to choose someone and then I just throw the responsibility on you. Put me on the spot. <laughs> this moment. Yeah. Um, has Bryn played? I think Bryn played yesterday. Bryn played yesterday? She missed Bryn yesterday. She crushed it. She, I believe she either got nine or ten. Bryn did very wow. well. Need you um, to this, though. Uh, Karasaurus, have you played? Do you wanna? Uh, look at that background, Kara. I'm Caro. First of all, yeah, Kara, Kara. what is your what is your birth name? <laughs> hey, am, am I? Oh, hi. Um, hey. It's Caroline. Okay. Or Caro, just like C A R O, but yeah, Caroline works. <laughs> For the purposes of this game, would you like to be referred to as Caro or Caroline? Caroline is fine. Fine, Caroline. I love your background. It looks like a brachiosaurus. I think that's Jurassic Park. Yeah. Inspired at the very least. All right. 
Caroline, here's how this game works. I'm going to read you the name of 10 different dinosaurs, some of which are actual real dinosaurs, some of which we have totally made up. Your job is simply to identify the dinos from the not dinos. If at any point you need a spelling, you can ask for that. Uh, I would look around the room for help if you need that. I think at this point it's pretty obvious who amongst us is, has like a dinosaur encyclopedia <laughs> in their brain. So here we go, 10 animals. You only have to get six out of 10 to pass, to survive. Caroline, are you ready to play? Yeah. All right, here we go. Animal number one, let's dig in. Protorzo. 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 Uh -uh. We're getting one, we're getting, we're getting like, we're getting some no's and yeses. This is I know, mixed, mixed audience here, it's tough. Protorzo. Um, thumbs up from Natty, but a thumbs down from M. That's tough. I don't know. I know. I'm going to go with no for now. <laughs> no, there's no for now. It's either no or no. We'll go with no. We'll go with no. Uh, that is correct. Protorzo is not a dinosaur. You are one for one. Well done. Number two, Lesothosaurus. Lesothosaurus. I think that's a, I'll go with dino. You're going dino. Correct. You are now two for two. Lesothosaurus is a dinosaur. Protorzo is not. Number three, Rotinops. Rotinops. Proto, rotate. I'm going to go with not a dino. Wow. Three for three. Uh, also remember, there's a theme for the not dinos. You are currently three for three. Next, number four. This one's hard to pronounce. Gasparinisaurus. Gasparinisaura. It's a struggle to pronounce. I'm going to go with a dino. You don't think I just make up a word that I personally was hard to pronounce for myself, even though I made it up? <laughs> so you're, you're you know, right. That is a dinosaur. You're now four for four. Well done. Doing great. Next, Pineodon. Pineodon. There are strong nose. There's strong. So you're getting a lot of strong nose from the audience for Pineodon. What is what is your final answer, Carolyn? Um, I'm gonna say not a dino. That's correct. You're now five for five. Off to a great start. Next, Iberomezornis. Iberomezornis. Iberia is Norris. I'm liking the mez part of that. I don't know why. I'm going to go with dino. You got an ornus in there too. We know that's bird. You're going dino? Yeah. I am sorry that I didn't make this more difficult because you're now six for six. Wow. Well done. Six for six. Off to a phenomenal start. You've already passed, so you could quit now, but we're going to keep going. Yes. Have, do you have any idea, inkling of the theme of the not dinos? So I'm not fully sure, but I was okay. curious by like the rotating word or the proto. Um, okay. I'm not fully okay. sure, honestly. You're still gathering evidence. That's, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Maybe this will help. Next one, number seven, Macaronychus. Macaronychus. Um, I'm getting strong nose. Macaronychus. I'm going to see me, if the macro is part of there. It's not macronychus. It's macro. What is it? It's not macro, like large. Macronychus is macaronychus. Can we get a spelling, please? Absolutely. M A C A R O N Y C H U S. Macaronychus. Macaron? <laughs> I'm going to say not a dino. You are correct. You're seven for seven. Number eight, Liao Ceratops. Liao Ceratops. Liao Ceratops. Can I get a spelling? I like these spellings. <laughs> L-I-A-O-C-E-R-A-T-O-P-S. Liao Ceratops. Sounds like it's named after someone, so I'm going to say Dino. I think it's named after a place, maybe, but it is a dinosaur, so you're correct. It might be a person or a place. I'm not sure. And hey, guess what? Person, place, or thing. We're named after people. So, all right. You have now gotten eight out of eight. You're in the home stretch. Two more. 
to go for to get in the the trophy cabinet of people who've gotten 100 percent you got two more to go here we go i'm shaking you you excited yeah <laughs> you seem pretty excited okay second to last liga bueno liga bueno Liga Bueno, you have to go like this. Liga Bueno. Liga Bueno. Liga Bueno. Uh, Someone had a very enthusiastic head shake. <laughs> as, as so, a yes or a no? I, I'm going to say uh, the Italian side of me wants to say no. Okay. You, um, I did see Daniel shaking his head so hard it, it looked like it was about to fly off. Yeah, yeah. So, so I... I I Lisa feel like um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give a no. You're gonna give a no. That is your first incorrect answer. Dang you, it! Listen, when in doubt, go to Martin. Just, just go to Martin. When in doubt, Liga Did Bueno. Did he even give me anything? <laughs> uh, yes, Liga Bueno is an Italian dinosaur. Liga Bueno. That is your first incorrect. Sorry. You can still get an A. You can get nine out of ten. Last but not least, uh, and hopefully you, after this last one, you're gonna be able to tell us the theme. I Number know. ten. This one's a toughie. Listen carefully. If you need a spelling, let me know. ZD. ZD? ZD. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure uh, that's uh, some pasta right there. So I'm going to say not a dino. You are correct. You've now got nine out of 10. I think you just discerned the theme for the not dinos. Would you like to share with everyone? Uh, not a dino theme would be pasta. It, it would be pasta. We had protorzo. We had roti nops, like roti, uh, rotini. We had yeah. ne odon, uh, macaronicus, yeah. and then ziti. See, the spelling, the spelling would have been great on some of these, but I, I love it. My Italian mother would be, she would have done well on this. <laughs> I, I didn't know you were had any Italian in you, and so this is a great happenstance. Also, just F right? FYI, uh, Christina, thank you for spelling ZD in the chat, in case anyone was wondering how that was spelled. Thank you. That's what a good co-host is here for. All right, Carol. I have to say that was the hardest one. <laughs> oh, very I like to save the hardest for last. We build up. We're building up. Yeah. Carolyn, you did great. Thank you for playing Thanks. Dino or not a Dino. All right, let's get into it. We today are not talking about Italians or pasta. We are talking about the world's smallest <laughs> dinosaurs. And there are a lot of them, and it's relatively subjective. First of all, because I had to make a list that we could have time to get through, and there are more than can fit on the list. And secondly, remember, we are finding little bits of bone, sometimes not even remotely close to be a complete skeleton. So we're making a lot of conjectures and, and educated guesses as to not just the length of this thing when it's fully feathered or fully fleshed out, but also like literally how much meat they had on their bones. So it's not exactly the easiest thing to estimate the exact weight or exact length for that matter. So we're going to count down the top nine, my top nine, because I can't just do things normally and have a top 10. So I wanted to do a top nine. Um, going from the largest to the absolute smallest. There are some that are very, very close, but generally speaking, again, based on the guesswork with respect to how much they actually weighed, we're going to go from largest, which is still pretty small, to the absolute smallest. And we're actually going to start, um, I'm going to bring up Michael's background here. Uh, Michael, can you tell us not only the name of the dinosaur behind you as well as the movie from which this scene is from? Well, anybody that knows Jurassic Park well enough, hardcore enough, knows this is from The Lost World. And behind me is a Copsignathus, or Copy for short. And uh, the little kid uh, ran into some trouble there. He, he's fine. He's fine. Don't worry about it. Wait, hold on, though. Is she fine? I was thinking about this. Like, the opening scene for that second Jurassic Park, she's on the beach. She gets attacked by these, and she's screaming, and then they run over. But we don't know if she, John like... John Hammond said she's fine. Okay, she okay. Seen, All right. Good. It would, be, it would be strange if they decided to open their second movie in the franchise with like a seven-year-old girl being killed by a bunch of dinosaurs on the yeah, beach. But that guy later in the movie wasn't so fine. Spoiler alert. Oh, that's right. Right. Mm. Don't tell him anymore. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Spoiler alert. Uh, Erica also says, Hammond says later that she's fine. Okay. So she is fine. I just missed that part. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's where we're starting. We're starting with Compsognathus. Uh, it's pretty famous. One of the smallest. Oh, we already saw the bee hummingbird. Oh, hold on. Before we get into the nine smallest dinosaurs, I want to do an honorable mention for these two. So on the left, we have Nemicolopterus, and on the right, Falcatus. 
And I had to show these because these are two of the smallest things that lived at the time of dinosaurs or weren't dinosaurs. Nemo Coleopterus was an incredibly small pterosaur, like really small pterosaur flying reptile. And obviously because we got the shark expert Jada, I had to show this weird derpy boy Falcatus with a giant eyeball and the weird pointy thing off the top of its head. They think maybe they use for mating. Jada, do you, have you seen this, this shark before? Um, I've seen it, but I don't really know anything about it. Um, but it's adorable. So yeah, I was gonna say, as our shark, as our resident shark expert, uh, scale one to ten, wh what's this thing ranking as far as sharks go? Uh, it's gonna get a solid nine and a half. Nine and a half. Okay, and it's yeah. small, very small shark. Very small. That's why it's cute. Cool. All right. So now number nine, we got Compsognathus. We just saw it. Um, probably feathered, some sort of featheration. I like this image. I should mention when I go through and try to find these pictures. I find ones that just I personally think look relatively realistic uh, and relatively good. I mean, anyone who's ever done a search for any dinosaur on Google Image Search, you'll see there's a wide variety of interpretations with respect to color, feathers, uh, size, positioning, all of that. So I try to pick ones that I think look relatively accurate. And I like this copy here. Its name, its name means dainty or elegant jaw. Lived, and by the way, down the bottom left, uh, MY stands for a million years. So this thing lived about 150 million years ago, about four feet long and seven pounds. Right, so it's pretty small as far as dinosaurs go, but clearly because this is number nine of a countdown, it is not the smallest. We're moving on to number eight, Wananosaurus. Oh, which does not mean elegant jaw. That shouldn't be there. Oh, it's gone. Uh, <laughs> Wananosaurus. This one is a little bit smaller. This one lived about 66 million years ago, which means it was around when the asteroid took out him, her, and all of their cousins, which is pretty sad, but what are you going to do? Two feet long, seven pounds, getting a lot smaller. How big is a, a human baby when they're born? I know it's like anywhere from six to like 11 pounds, but as far as the length goes, uh, do we have any, does anyone know? Parents I, I, always I, say that in inches. I know. You know? Never, yeah, I don't know. Can somebody tell me in the chat how long a human baby is? <laughs> 19 to 12 inches. 20, 19 to 21 inches. All right. So 16 this is, to 22. All right, we have a range. All right. So this is basically the size of an infant human around, right? Maybe slightly smaller. But yeah, so here we go. Wananosaurus. That's number eight. We're going to move on. We're going pretty quick. We got a lot to go through. Nine specifically. Aquilops. We had a special request from a couple people for this one. Eagle face. Right. Now, oh, I want to go back actually for one second. Does anyone know the group of dinosaurs that Wananosaurus belongs to? So Compsognathus was a type of small theropod. Does anyone know what Wananosaurus is? Uh, Megan says Pachy. That is correct. Uh, it's a type, it is the smallest Pachycephalosaurid. Yeah, and you can see it's kind of got that weird dome crested skull. That's actually one of the thickest, biggest parts we found of this one. Because we talked about this during uh, our day on Pachycephalosaurus. When you've got an incredibly thick skull, it just lasts a lot longer in the fossil record. It can be easier found than, you know, small dainty bones that get broken pretty easily. All right, so that is number eight, one source Back to Aquilops. We had a couple people requesting our friend here, Aquilops, which means eagle face. About 106 million years ago, two feet long only about three pounds, so a really tiny little guy. I'm gonna ask you guys the same question here. What group of dinos do you believe Aquilops belongs to? Hint, it's not a sauropod. <laughs> Christine, do we need uh, guesses? Yeah, I have from Jada and Richard and Michael and Tony all agree, and Martin and Stuart and others who are gonna come in as I'm saying it, uh, Ceratopsians. Ceratopsian, that's absolutely correct. You got a Ceratopsian here. The next one, which, oops, I forgot to put on our list, so I guess we're only doing the top eight. Uh, I'm just gonna close this. You guys have probably, you know, whatever, it happens. Uh, you guys have probably heard of Microraptor. So Microraptor was supposed to be number six. It's a type of Dromaeosaur, about the same size as Aquilops. Uh, Microraptor lived about 120 million years ago, about three feet long, two pounds, so a really small, feathered, potentially being able to glide between trees. Animal, we're not sure. That is Microraptor, uh, which is cool, but apparently not cool enough for me to remember to keep on the list. Moving on to one whose name I really like, Saltipus. I feel like maybe this was one I used for Dino or not a Dino at some point. Saltipus, which means hopping foot. 
which is a cool name. Uh, it's, I don't know, Saltibus is just great. We got a little guy, a dragonfly, maybe a damselfly it's catching. This one's pretty old. We're talking 220 million years ago. And all about the same size as our Quelops and as our Microraptor, about three feet long, only about two pounds. So now we are about to get into our top four. And the next four I want to spend a little bit more time on just because they are incredibly small and incredibly weird and cool looking. This is a relatively newly discovered dinosaur out of China. Have you guys heard of Yi Qi? Yi Qi? Depending on who you, how you pronounce I don't speak Mandarin. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. But its name means strange wing because we think it had these membranes between the wings. It also had these crazy cool tail feathers, maybe for ornamentation. We're not sure. But a very, very small, possibly insectiv insectivorous uh, dinosaur, 159 million years ago in China, only about a pound. Very small dino. Um, people call it like the dragon dinosaur because it looks almost like a tiny little dragon. I love this guy. We have seen so many very weird and cool looking dinosaurs, especially small, uh, often feathered dinos coming out of China in the last five years or so. Um, that is, I think, a place where you can, there and Eastern Africa. Like we found obviously a ton of dinosaurs in North America, Canada, the United States. Uh, but the last 10 or 15 years, we're starting to find some really, really cool, weird, different things like Spinosaurs, like Yi Chi in different parts of the world because we're finally starting to spend time and money looking in those different places. Again, one of the reasons why we found so many in America is that's simply where we started looking and where resources were, um, were put. So that is number four. So we are now in our top three. Christine, I want to pause for a second before we get to our top three smallest dinos. Do you have any questions, comments from yourself or the audience? Oh, thank you for the Microraptor picture. Oh, yeah. Microraptor is up in the chat. Um, check that out. We have a, a Dustin for scale in there. Um, I don't have any audience questions yet. Okay. But I do have a pronunciation. Yi Chi? Yi Chi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that sounds right. Yi Chi. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, are we ready for our top three, Christina? You ready? Now ready I'm ready. Three? Okay, cool. Um, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the world's top three smallest dinosaurs. I really just will never get tired of using that. And because of the top three, they get two pictures instead of one. Um, good luck pronouncing this. I'm gonna try right now, here we go. Epidexipteryx. Oh, actually, all right, I feel like I pulled that off. Epidex Epidexipteryx. Unique New York, unique New York. Epidexipteryx, wow. Epidexic, uh, whatever. Its name means display feather, and it's based off of those feather thingies you see coming out the back. Not so dissimilar than uh, Yi Chi's. We think they were for display. Not sure if they had an actual functional aspect, maybe for gliding, helping glide. We're not really sure. And these guys were incredibly tiny, right? So 163 million years ago, only a little bit over a foot long, about 14 inches, and less than half a pound. Estimates put it at about 6.8 ounces. Remember, there's 16 ounces in a pound. That is less than half a pound. An incredibly small, tiny, very cute, weird, long-armed dino with that third extended pink, uh, middle finger really long. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the extant primate, the eye eye, which lives only on Madagascar, it's an incredibly long, elongated third finger that we're pretty sure it, it uses to actually get into trees and like stab grubs. So we're not exactly sure how Epidex Ipteryx would have hunted. I mean, obviously over here on, on the right, it's displayed as looking for grubs in a tree. Um, but it is an example of convergent evolution, where we see a very similar feature that has evolved in two different not closely related animals, sometimes for a similar function. And so it stands to reason that possibly the function uh, for the Epidex, Epidex Ip, we need a short name. Epi, we're going Epi. The uh, name for Epi, or I'm sorry, the function of that finger for Epi was similar to that of today's II. We're not exactly sure. I also wanted to make sure you guys saw this picture on the right, because we talked about paleo art a few days back, and we forgot to mention Emily Willoughby, who is one of my absolute favorite paleo artists. So if you want to see great looking paleo art, Emily Willoughby, uh, she made the picture over on the right. I love the different coloration on the, the feathers there as well as those cute little teeth at the end of the beak. That is Epi, whose name means display feather. That is number three. 
the world's third smallest dinosaur. Number two, Parvacursor. Parvacursor means small runner. Again, we think possibly these guys were insectivores simply based on their size and their ecology. Much different arms, obviously, than Epi, right? Much smaller, little pointy, very theropod, almost T-Rex, youthless little arms. Much different, which means it was probably exploiting the environment differently, hunting in a slightly different way. This is also just like our friend Epi. These are different types of theropods. Remember, theropods are three-toed, primarily carnivorous dinos, raptors, T-Rex, that type of thing. Parvacursor was about 75 million years old, just over a foot. Remember, uh, our friend here was 6.8 inches and about, I'm sorry, 6.8 ounces and 14 inches long, about 14 inches long, but slightly less heavy at only 5.7 ounces. That's less than a pound. Yes. That makes that dragonfly, what, like a five inch long dragonfly? Um, I don't think it'd be five inches long. No, but, but still a huge dragon. Okay, so the whole thing is, that's still like a very large dragonfly. Like if this is like, I don't know, this is about 14 inches and that dragonfly is maybe like, I don't know, like this big? All right, that's what I was impressed by in this picture and I'm focusing on the wrong things. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know much about dragon and or damsel, damselfly evolution, uh, especially with respect to what they look like 75 million years ago. We'll need to get an insect expert back, Christina. But thank you for fact-checking the size of the bugs in these pictures. They were huge. This is actually a segue. We're not going to hit number one. We're going to transition from the world's smallest dinosaurs to the world's largest insects. Let's go. No. Um, You're that's welcome. A different day. All right, you guys ready for number one? We already brought it up. You know what it is. It's the dino of the day. We had to have at least one extant dinosaur on this list. Reason being is because, as we know, birds are literally living dinosaurs, and there's a lot of very small birds around today. And I had to include one, and I was like, well, let's go with literally the smallest then. Ladies and gentlemen, we already saw it. You've been drawing it. My favorite, the bee hummingbird. How small are these guys? How small? Well, first of all, they're alive today. They're only about a little over two inches long. They weigh less than a penny. How that is even possible blows my mind. I guess a penny is pretty dense because it's solid nickel, whereas these guys, there's some fluids and some air and other stuff inside their bodies, but literally less than a penny. These things live exclusively on Cuba and another nearby island. Hummingbirds in general are the smallest group of extant living dinosaurs. The bee hummingbird is absolutely the smallest. Um, I, let me open up this thing because I did a little bit of research with respect to hummingbird wings, like how they actually move them so quickly to be able to stay a, a flight. And in order to do that, what does that mean with respect to their chest muscles that are actually moving those wings? And even maybe more importantly, what is their heart rate like? to be able to maintain the energy to boost themselves up and shake those winds, winds, wings. Um, let me bring this up, give me one second. While we are doing so, Christina, do we have any questions or comments from the chat thus far? Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah, so first of all, I had a couple of people agreeing bugs were gigantic during dino times. They were bigger, um, they were bigger. Stuart says higher oxygen content, so insects who rely on gases diffusion could get bigger. Mm -hmm. Woo. Mm -hmm. um, and Erica is saying uh, big insects during the Carboniferous period were the best. They're totally wild. There's like a whole um, like room full of a single millipede uh, exhibit I'm thinking of. Where is that? Oh, I don't remember. I'll get back to you. Okay. Um, I'll drop it in the chat. But right now I have a ton of questions coming in. You ready for yeah. some? Let's go. Okay. Um, Stuart asks, why so many feathered dinos from China? Is it a sampling bias or a center of diversity? Um, great question. It could be both. Also, the Chinese dinos that we're finding, many, uh, like the rock strata that people are finding them and looking in in China is about the right age around the whole like Archaeopteryx time period, about 150 million years ago, when we first started to see the animals that when we look at now, we see bridging the gap between like a bird and a dinosaur. So those feathered bird-like dinos started to arise on the scene around 150 million years ago. Obviously, maybe not obviously, but Archaeopteryx is from Germany. We're finding a bunch now in China. And so maybe it's something about the time period. I don't know, maybe these guys evolved to fill ecological niches to eat insects that weren't really being filled at the time. We're just, we're not sure. So it could be a combination of all of those things. Incredible. Great question. 
Uh, Canon asked that tiny ceratops, was it found to have that crossbill like mouth? If so, do you think it could have eaten conifer cones like modern crossbills? Ooh, maybe. I've never even thought about that. That's why I love these questions. because so you guys think about like ways of living and, and feeding and reproducing that I've never even considered. I don't know. It's a great question. Great question. I'm not sure. Can you bring up the picture so we can yeah. see a, a crossbill mouth? Wait, of the bee hummingbird? No, the uh, tiny ceratops. Oh, the uh, aquilops? Yeah. Yeah. Eagle face. Love this guy. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Sissy asked, do we know if Parvicursor arms were actually that small or have fossils just not really been found? Um, I'm not sure fossil. about that one. I know, I mean, none of these are like com perfectly complete specimens. Um, I would just look, look up Parvicursor on Wikipedia and it usually says what parts were actually found and what parts of the animal uh, scientists use to describe and name it. And some it's only parts of the body. Some of its complete skeletons. That's the other thing. Like, it's incredibly rare to find a complete specimen for an animal like Brontosaurus. Like, it's just enormous. So it's much more likely when you have really small animals like this that you actually, if you find it, you find a complete specimen. That being said, it's harder to find something this big than it is finding something the length of three school buses. Always a trade-off. Martin asked, is there evidence for nectar feeding small dinos aside from the hummingbirds of today? I mean, I know that we have, we found parts of feathered dinosaur, like recently they found that feathered dinosaur tail stuck in amber. I mean, that could be an indication that it was trying to feed on sap from that tree or maybe feed on bugs that got su stuck in the sap from that tree. So we're not sure, but it's possible. That stands to reason. Awesome. And uh, Bryn asks, how about the newly discovered Oculudentavis? Creepy. I have not. Can you spell that in the chat so I can look that up when we are done here? Because I've not heard of that. That's yeah, and I can drop a picture of it too. Yeah, the... let's. All right. That's cool. that for now. Keep sending me your questions and we'll get to them at next question time. I just want to step back for a second to talk about hummingbirds because like obviously hummingbirds are amazing. They're birds, so they're dinosaurs. And when we think about dinosaurs, we often think of giant crazy monsters with amazing adaptations for survival. But if you think about hummingbirds, the adaptations they have are insane. So like we just looked at the bee hummingbird. Now, generally speaking, hummingbirds, their chest muscles are a third of their entire body weight. And it's simply because they need all that musculature there to actually flap those wings so quickly. If you've ever seen a hummingbird fly, it's incredible because you don't even see the wings really moving. It's like a blur and that head is perfectly still. And they do that with incredibly strong, heavy chest muscles that are a third of their body weight. Some hummingbirds, their heart rates approach 1300 beats per minute. Over a thousand beats per minute, beating so quickly to provide the oxygen in the blood in order to flap those wings at a rate that makes them blurry when you look at them. And speaking of that rate, we're talking some hummingbird species able to flap their wings at, this is not per minute, this is per second, 80 times per second. They can flap those wings 80 times per second. That's just like an incredible vibration that allows these things to stay aloft. And the energy that is necessary from this means that hummingbirds have the greatest metabolic rate of any warm-blooded animal. So when we talk about dinosaurs having amazing adaptations and being just amazing creatures, we're not just talking about dinosaurs that have been extinct for 70, 65 million years. We're talking about the dinosaurs that are all around us all the time. Uh, and that's why I had to end our smallest dinosaur countdown with hummingbirds because A, they're dinosaurs, B, they're literally the smallest, and they're, they have inarguably some of the most dank adaptations ever produced, which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, and the downside, Martin points out, is they basically have to eat constantly. I guess you could consider that a downside. Some people would consider that a positive, just eating constantly. Now, we just went through a list of, well, I guess it was supposed to be a list of nine, but it became a list of eight because I for forgot Microraptor. Um, we have done our list of smallest dinosaurs. Because of popular demand, we're bringing back our game from tomorrow. So, Christina... Are you, you were not here. Our game from tomorrow? Is our this game, the future? Our game from, our <laughs> game from 
the day yesterday. That's yesterday. The day before today. The day the game from yesterday. So yesterday, Jada eked out a victory over Rob. And so what that means is, Jada, I'm going to unmute you here. You get to choose who you are competing against today. Now, let me just remind everyone the name of the game, and then you can for a competitor. Here we go. The name of our game is, so we're all one big Dino 101 quarantine stuck at home Zooming together, so why not Zoom around your house doing dinosaur-related scavenger hunt-like game? Or, as you put it, Jada. Oh, wait, I forgot. What did I say? <laughs> you made a great I thought you wrote it down. Oh, wait. Uh, quarantine runaround. That's what quarantine it was. Quarantine runaround. Who are you going to be competing against today? Since I'm a reigning champ, mm -hmm. I want to compete against another reigning champ. So oh. I'm calling Natty to the stage. Let's do this. Oh, you're bringing Natty up. Okay. Uh, Natty, rave. There you are. Uh, Natty, I'm going to make you a co host for Hot Seconds. Whoop. Oh, God. I think I just sent her to the. Uh, just sent her to the waiting room by accident. Hold on, we'll, we'll get her back. Uh, where'd she go? Christina, can you find Natty? I'm off of this. Where'd Natty, can you find Natty, make her the co-host? Yeah, I, I can't give co-host abilities, but I can, I can unmute. Natty, yeah, unmute her. Natty, raise your hands, shake them around so I can find you. Hello. Hello. There she is, all right. Natty, this game, is rapid fire. You're going to have 30 seconds. Were you here yesterday? Do you remember us playing this yesterday? Yeah. All right. So here's this, how this is going to work. It's Natty versus Jada. There are three rounds. You have to find and bring back to us the thing that I request. You have no more than 30 seconds. Absolute max. If you're past 30 seconds, you lose that round automatically. There are three rounds. It's anyone's game. Here we go. Round number one. What I need you to find us in 30 seconds is something miniature. Something miniature, go. Ah. Jada, Jada's wasting a lot of time <laughs> thinking. Natty is already back with a tiny pachycephalosaur. Jada, Jada's got a shark, which I guess is also mini. Uh, Christina, what do you, is that a purse? What is yes. this? It's a shark purse. Oh my goodness. Wow, okay. All right, this is tough. We got a mini pachycephalosaur and we have a shark purse. Christina, what do you think? Who does round one go to? Christina, you're muted. There we go. Oh, gosh. Uh, it one? goes to mini packy. Mini packy. She did it quickly. Natty, you've won round one. That's okay. There's two more rounds. Second round, you need to bring us a sauropod. We're talking about really small dinosaurs. The sauropods were the biggest. I need some iteration of a sauropod, one of the long neck dinos. Whatever your version, it can be a picture. It can be something that isn't exactly one. I like Natty. She's got a box of dinos behind her, <laughs> ready to go. Jada, uh, Jada, got got a drawing maybe? Let's see. So Jada has her Tepo, Teto, Tito, the titanosaur. Oh. Natty has both a brachiosaur and a drawing. <gasps> Round two goes to Natty. Natty, yeah. you're crushing it right now. All right. Um, I have a question before round three. Jada and Natty, do you guys live on the ground floor of where you live? Yes. Uh, no, I live up in upstairs. But you, you live at, you're in a house or an apartment complex, Natty? Um, house. You're in a house. So it's easy for you to get outside, right? Yeah. All right, you have 30 seconds. Each of you need to bring me something from outside. Go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. I wonder what they're going to bring back. Listen, everyone that is now in the room, we're going to play a little bit of a game. As they come back, I want us all to just be barely off screen. So when they come back, they're going to think no one is in the Zoom room at all. All right? So I need everyone to hide for a minute. Everyone just hide. Just get barely off screen. Hopefully, you can still see your screen. Oh, wait. You guys are doing great. There's, there's no one here. Huh? Whoa, cat. This is a, this is from outside. I went, I get. I oh, Natty's got her headphones on outside. I love it. Oh no. Uh, Jada and Natty, you guys, where did, wait, where did everyone go? All right, let's back. We're back. Let's go. <laughs> Hi guys. Did, did you, did you find us? You're back. So Natty, know, you got an actual cat. Is this a live cat? animal? Wait, Natty, is this your cat or did you just find yeah, a cat outside? Yeah, it's my cat. Okay. <laughs> and I also have another one. 
I was hoping you had found a raccoon outside when I saw you bring that back into the screen. Like she went and found a feral animal. That's pretty good. You brought the cat, Jada. If I had time to catch a lizard, I would have, but I did. I this is what I have. <laughs> Jada brought back and a, a rock, rock and some grass. Yeah. All right. We don't uh, even have grass here. These are just weeds. <laughs> oh well. So Christina, I forgot to mention that in round three, points are doubled. So really, it's still anyone's ball game. Who do you, who do you think won that round? This is such. Actually, why don't we have? Wait, let's get some votes in the, in the chat box, you guys. Who do we think won round three? Bring us something from outside, either Jada, Jada with a rock and some weeds, or <laughs> Natty with two cats. Who Ooh. won round three? <laughs> uh, uh, Jada, I'm sorry. It's really Natty heavy in this oh, chat. Yeah. Somebody says cats. <laughs> If Wait. someone had voted for me, I would have questioned why. Like, that's not, I have a rock. Like, what is this? Yeah. I, I uh -huh. have expectations for you. That's okay. I do love a rock, but um, I think this one goes to Natty. Yeah, Natty, congratulations. You have won our game, which a is- A double against, champion. Right? Now, Natty is just, she's like the Michael Jordan of the Dino 101 now. Just, yeah, just backing dude. up the trophies. Well done, Natty. Uh, you get to play against someone tomorrow. We'll figure that out then. Okay. All right, uh, Christina, do we have any more questions or comments before we go into our last little bit with our, our, our Bee Hummingbird renditions? Let's see, I have to go back through this pile of people saying, Natty! Um, uh, and people echoing every time you use the word dank. That makes my day to see my chat just with dank, 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 dank. Dank, 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 dank. Um, no, I just want to show you that I dropped off a picture of Oculodentavis in the chat. Um, the amber that it was found in uh, was 31 millimeters across. So there's no uh, scale bar on the picture I dropped, but this little burb probably would have been what? That's its skull. The little guy? Pretty small. Oh, the skull is 31. <laughs> Wait, the skull is 31? The amber that the skull was found in would have been what? What's a millimeter? Would have been like that. Wait, a millimeter is like really like a centimeter is like this, right? Wow. See, this is really why the American school system needs to move over to metric. We gotta, we gotta stop with this ridiculousness. He says as he included the poundage for every animal that he we did today. Anyway, all right. Um, I want to remind you guys before we get into our paleo art galleries, as Christina tries to find a ruler somewhere. Maybe no, I'm kidding. Um, if you want to support this thing that we've literally done for over 40 days in a row, and we're not stopping, uh, you can send us a couple dollars. I am Dustin hyphen Groic on Venmo or dgroic at gmail.com if you use PayPal. That is always very much appreciated. Uh, all right, let's see these bee hummingbirds. I'm really excited we're doing an actual living live extant today that you can see with your own eyeballs, dinosaur. Oh, we got a question. Yes, please. Uh, Carly asks, do we have any hypotheses about dino hearing? I'm thinking of our epi friend in that finger. The II uses its long middle finger to tap on wood and find hollow spaces. Maybe epi used it this way? So I'm not sure, I can't comment specifically on epi, but a couple of ways that we're able to make smart, educated guesses or hypotheses about senses such as hearing is some dinosaurs, especially small ones, are so well preserved, they've actually preserved some of the inner ear bones that can give us clues about the hearing, as well as once we have a really well-preserved brain case, which is the empty space inside the skull where the brain was, based on that shape, certain areas may be larger than others. So for instance, T-Rex has really large olfactory bulbs, a space where um, we process uh, smell, right? And so for T-Rex, it stands reason they had a really good or maybe heightened sense of smell compared to other dinosaurs with a similar brain size. So you can do similar things with other dinosaurs with respect to certain senses. I'm not sure exactly um, when it comes to hearing, but I would, I would guess those are two pretty great ways that you can start to make smart, educated guesses about their hearing. That's a really cool idea, thinking about how they physically use their body to hear stuff and then to eat it. I love that. All right, gallery time. So I gallery love time. you guys held up your images. Christina, I feel like I've been talking for 45 minutes straight, so uh, as someone who has their finger on the pulse of scale sizes, let us know how you feel about uh, each of these. Oh, this is pretty cute. 
Oh, it's just sitting on a little pencil. Let me start. Wait, I do want to say one thing. I didn't mention anything about scale. We talk about how you have to have something for scale. That's just good science. I love that you included something because this is really small. If you just put a hummingbird on a paper, you have no idea. I love that you included a pencil for scale. Birds are not my strong suit. You know, but you tried your best, both here and in the game. All right. Christina, how do we feel about natties? Oh, natty. That's awesome. Uh, your bee hummingbird is, is that on a branch? Yeah. I'm just a tiny twig branch. Beautiful natty. Uh, by the way, I just dropped in the chat a uh, uh, scan of that dino, the tiny one's skull, uh, oh, with cool. some scale on it. So nice. everybody learns centimeters now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> beautiful M. Oh, your marker post-it collection is growing beautifully. I like that. I like how you like like counter shaded the background to really make it pop into that. You're like a professional artist here, but I don't know. You're no real Richard Cantu. Wow. Look at this. Oh, he's got motion in the wings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's an action bird. I like that you made the list on your paper as I was counting them down. Uh, did you get Micro Raptor on there or not? <laughs> no, no, oh. I forgot it too. I forgot it too. It's all good. Uh, that was my question. All right. Uh, Martin. Oh, wow. Martin, who, who drew this? Michelangelo? What's happening here? So gentle. Oh, gentle so hand. Cute. You guys, I am always blown away by the artistic skills. Speaking of, Margo's. Margo. Oh, a thoughtful little bird. Becky. I like that Becky. name. Is that Becky? It says Betty? No, Betsy. 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 I like Thinking that. Thinking about nectar. How about Tony's? Bailey the bee hummingbird <gasps> with a bee friend. It's good. It's good. Into it. Into it. Look at Inez. Egon. That's a cool oh. name for a hummingbird. Oh, I have. Oh, that's. I love. I love the uh, feather details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I had plumage like that. Yeah. I mean, we didn't really talk much about it, but a of all, obviously, they're the smallest dinosaur smallest bird they also had incredible iridescence in those feathers i know that's hard to draw but like wow ah! <laughs> wow uh, i'm gonna go ahead and screenshot this because wow uh i christy i christina what are your thoughts here i don't i can't comment oh wow this is some above and beyond stuff uh <laughs> like, that's how you I really my arms just like straight down Yes. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're just, it's, it's everything we've ever wanted. Dustin for scale. It's, I, yeah, I'm also at a loss for words. Really above and beyond. Well done, Bryn. Plus, we're in a great shirt, too. Uh, we do have a whole paleo art gallery over here, per usual. These look really, oh, one on a pencil, too. Nice, guys. Guys, these are so pretty. I like the T-Rex and the, the Bronto, maybe a Brachiosaurus you're holding up in the background there. Wow. Oh, sitting on the edge of a pencil too. Okay. I like the two different renditions of the same, mm -hmm. uh, of mm -hmm. the same phenomenon of a bird sitting on the back of a pencil. Yeah. How about this? From <gasps> Dino Duo. The Dino Duo. The Dino Duo. Different explorations of color palettes here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. One's Ooh, like a Chris Martin and one's like a Rothko. That's not a fair assessment but <laughs> uh i yeah you know those arts do we have a spiky boy there i'm going back through the chat now someone shared with me earlier just like a really delightful word for for b if you could share that with me again if you're the person who shared that delightful word in german this is a delightful drawing by the way by patrick oh, I found it. judith sent me this apparently christina doesn't care about these drawings i care patrick, oh, i love it I love it. I think it's I great. do too. I was just highlighting a thing from earlier. Great. All right. Another. I got a couple more. I got to go through these. Ooh, Amy. Oh, wow. Benjamin the bee hummingbird. I like that it's been magnified so you can see the detail. Love that. Move it. What's it say around the top? Move your so small, tiniest extant dino. Nice. So small. It looks like an action hero with a burst of colors. Uh, wow, this looks like you just tore this right out of a textbook, Judith. Well done. This is absolutely beautiful. Again, I'm incredibly impressed. Um, just quick shout out. 
Hi, mom. How's it going? Okay, cool. Uh, Rebecca, I just want to say hi to Rebecca, who, <laughs> Rebecca, thank you for joining us from what clearly is a much more important thing that you're doing right now than counting down the world's smallest dinosaurs. Um, I'm going to unmute you. Where, where are you? What are you, what is your job? <laughs> hi, is it Nita still? We can hear you. Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to be operating room at Vancouver General Hospital in Canada. And this is how you chose to spend your hour. Well, I mean, yeah. Not much. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Thank you for hanging out. What is on your head scarf thingy? Oh, this is our little snail. <gasps> oh, I love a gastropod. Who doesn't That's love a gastropod? That's awesome. Gastropod? That is amazing. Rebecca, thank you for joining us. Uh, Agus. You rock, Rebecca. Going, but his whole, his art gallery is there. <laughs> Igis really took to heart our fun prank of leaving the call. Um, to right. be or not to be an ultimate small boy. I think this is, this is implying that Justin is the ultimate small boy, even smaller than the hummingbird. I, yeah, the scale is a little bit off right here, but like you're pandering to me and I love it. My hair looks great. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, we got a last couple here, Adela. A little digital drawing. Bella, oh, this is really cute. Bella, oh, another one with the perspective of the burb right in the front. Right in the front. Proud burb. All right, Ashley. Ashley going above and beyond, per usual. The world's smallest dinosaurs. <gasps> fluffy guy. Is that Christine? Oh, Christine. Is that me? <laughs> Thanks. Representing the haircut. Uh, let's see, Provinoraptor here. Provinoraptor's got a bee and a hummingbird together, I think. Oh no, it's a person. And a bee humming, I, I like what you did there, bee hummingbird. A quick shout to Stuart, because he has a hummingbird on his background and a T-Rex skull on his shirt, it appears. And Stuart just told me uh, that it's his first time tuning in live because it's 3 a.m. in Australia where he is. Go to sleep, my friend, but thank you for joining us. No, seriously, this is great. We have people from all over the world. These are amazing drawings. Christina, where can they post those drawings so everyone can see them? Send them to at of the Daily Dino on Instagram. Uh, one of our regulars is posting those on that account. And then tag me and Dustin in them as well. We've been seeing them. It makes our day. Yeah. Oh, wait. I got to go to Karasaurus real fast. She did win Dino or Not a Dino, and she had time to draw this hummingbird. Get to the coloration later. I like, I like the start here. We've off to a great start. All right, Christina, our time is just about up. Do you have any last really small words that you'd like to share before we bounce? First of all, your hair is smaller and we all love it. It's very so small. That. Thank you. Um, I think I'm going to go study the metric system. That's my plan for the rest of the day. My plan for the rest of the day is to figure out who and or what we are going to talk about tomorrow because we're not, I'm not really sure. We have a few different ones. So this is just going to have to be a surprise. I'm just have to trust you guys. You're going to be back here tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. I'm glad we got to count down the world's smallest dinosaurs. Maybe we could do, would we, should we do the world's biggest dinos? Or is that just redundant at this point? Christina, what do you think? The largest? The lord. <laughs> I've never heard large, but now that you've said large, I'm going to say that a lot. Yeah, we probably ought to count down the top eight or nine, depending on what you decide to do, dinos. Largest. Now, largest. Should we do just the overall largest or should we be like largest sauropod, largest theropod, largest ornithopod? I'm going to keep saying largest. All right. I think we largest. just decided. That is how science works. We come together. We have decided that tomorrow we're going to do the world's largest dinosaurs from each of the major dinosaur groups. That's going to be fun for sure. Kanan says neckiest dinos. <laughs> the best of the top 10 neck meat dinos. Top 10 necks of all time. That, I like that. I think we need like a whole week to research and prep for that because it's a very serious topic. It's true. Neck meat. So tomorrow we're going to do the world's largest <laughs> dinosaurs. For now, I don't care if you're studying the world's smallest dinosaurs or you're trying to reach deep down into that plant, into that flower to get that sweet, sweet nectar because you're a bee hummingbird. Never stop digging. Thank you guys for joining us. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the just decided breaking news, world's largest dinosaurs. Have a great Wednesday, guys. Bye. Bye.